Roster breakdown coming your way on today's San Francisco 49ers report. And after the Niners officially set in stone their 53-man initial roster, just want to take a look at this team to see how things are shaping up going into week one against the Pittsburgh Steelers. By the way, for those of you who are watching this right now, we're going to put this video out over the weekend. I'm going to be in Charlotte for the UNC South Carolina game, a matchup between two of the top quarterbacks in college football, between Spencer Rattler and Drake May. So I just want to put this video out there and we're planning ahead, obviously, with our content strategy. So a look at the 2023 squad after the initial 53-man roster was released. First, though, if you're pumped up for the start of the season, Niners, Steelers, week one coming up on September 10th, then make sure you hit that thumbs up icon and like the video. We start off at the quarterback position for the Niners here. And after the trade of Trey Lance, Brock Purdy, he has the official reins to be this team's starting quarterback. Sam Darnold will officially be QB2, and Brandon Allen will be the third stringer. Clearly, San Francisco really likes what Darnold was able to do throughout training camp and in the preseason. I'm not sure for me he necessarily passed the eye test as a guy who I have a lot of confidence in if Purdy were to miss extended time. The size, arm, athleticism, it's always been there for Darnold. And while he's made some great plays, he's also made some awful plays from time to time, throwing the football away to the opposition at inopportune times. But can Kyle Shanahan get him right? Can Kyle Shanahan maximize him like he's maximized a couple of players throughout his coaching career? Matt Schaub, Kirk Cousins, Matt Ryan, Brock Purdy, C.J. Beathard, Nick Mullins. There is a potential possibility that could be the case. And then Brandon Allen, a much more serviceable QB3 as compared to Josh Johnson. To running back now, San Francisco might have the deepest running back room in the NFL. I think that Christian McCaffrey last year, that he was able to stay healthy, solidified himself as the best all-around back in the league. Once again, a guy who can run in between the tackles, get out to the perimeter, catch the ball out of the backfield, but also with that clean-ass footwork, he can line up in the slot and dice you up as a wide receiver. If Elijah Mitchell can stay healthy, he always finds a way to find positive yards. I love his decisiveness in this offense to see the hole and hit it. Jordan Mason gives you that physical element. Ty Davis Price does as well. I like the power speed balance component that TDP brings to that running back room. He simply has to get better, though, in pass protection. And then Kyle Juszczyk still is the best fullback in the game. Now we shift gears to wide receiver. I really like the makeup of the wide receiving unit as well. Brandon Ayuk last year emerged to me as the Niners' number one wide receiver. One of the most slept-on wideouts in the game, a guy who has unbelievable footwork, yards to pick up after the catch that he seems to do so seamlessly, really good hands, and one of the cleanest route runners in the game. Debo Samuel, on the other hand, isn't necessarily the all-around traditional wideout that Brandon Ayuk is, but still one of the most lethal weapons in the NFL who's a threat to take it to the crib anytime he has his hands on the football. Jawan Jennings, very good security blanket who always comes up Clutch on third and fourth downs. Ray Ray McLeod, a really good returner. Good for Ronnie Bell to make this team. He looked like Debo Samuel Light in the preseason, picking up yards after contact, running through tacklers, making plays downfield. I like his future, and we'll see what the future holds for Danny Gray as he's coming off an injury as well. To tight end, a little bit of a surprise to see Brayden Willis crack the 53-man roster. In my final roster projection, I actually had Brayden Willis crack in the club. I'm glad that he did. He could play a little H-back, fullback, contribute on special teams. And once again, experience wins out with Ross Dwelly and Charlie Warner making it. George Kittle, of course. Still one of the best all-around tight ends in the NFL. Seven touchdowns the last four games last year. He really had it working with Brock Purdy. Offensive line, still a big question mark for me. I like the left side of it. Trent Williams, still the best left tackle in the game. Aaron Banks played at a Pro Bowl level last year. Jake Brendel was a Pro Bowl alternate. A lot of people don't realize that. Spencer Burford added some much-needed weight in the offseason. That's something that needed to happen because at times last year, he got pushed around a bit. And the big question going into 2023, what can Colton McKivitz give this team? 
Can Colton McKivitz be better in pass protection than Mike McGlinchey? Can he be just as good as Mike McGlinchey in the run game? Very excited to see what transpires there. Jalen Moore struggled throughout the preseason. Chris Forrester, offensive line coach, even said as much. John Feliciano can play center or guard as a backup. Matt Pryor can really only play right tackle. That's where he's comfortable. And then Nick Sakel made this team. The Niners like his upside, but frankly, I didn't see a lot in the preseason either. We're going to take a look at the defensive side of the football here in just a moment. First, though, take a guess. How many games will the Niners win in 2023? Let me know down in the comments section. Also, if you want to support the show, rock some San Francisco gear and get geared up for the regular season, get your shirts now. Chatsports.com slash SF. You see me rock this shirt pretty often on the show. You can get it in red as well as black. You see the link down below. Chatsports.com slash SF. To the defensive side of the rock, I'm going to put Nick Bosa here, even though as of this recording on Wednesday, he hasn't signed that contract extension, but he's going to be a part of the plans for San Francisco in 2023. And for Bosa, hopefully that deal gets done as soon as possible so that he's not on a snap count week one against Pittsburgh. Javon Hargrave, the big ticket free agent signing, 11 sacks last year in Philadelphia. He's going to allow Nick Bosa to not have as many double teams Eric Armstead, I think, could get unlocked playing next to Hargrave as well as Bosa. Big year two coming up for Drake Jackson. The play that he made in the preseason finale against the Chargers in which he jumped up, tipped the ball in the air, and nearly came down with a diving interception goes to show you the ability that Drake Jackson has. And if he takes that step heading into year two, it only does wonders for this defense. Robert Beal Jr. making the initial 53. Kevin Givens, a good depth piece. You have Javon Kinlaw, Kalia Davis, his other backup defensive tackles. And I think that Cleveland Furl, playing under Chris Kosarek, could put in that work and have a career year this year. Niners probably have the best linebacking unit in the NFL. And with their depth, one of the deepest linebacking units in the NFL. Fred Warner, best in the game. Dre Greenlaw, one of the best in the game. D. Winters and Jalen Graham are two rookies who the Niners drafted with a couple of their late picks who have blazing sideline to sideline speed. And that sideline to sideline speed, especially important in today's NFL, when offenses try to get vertical, but they also try to stretch you out from sideline to sideline. And if you can counter that with some linebackers who can diagnose plays and just make plays, like their hair is on fire from sideline to sideline. It helps you out. Demetrius Flanagan fouls making this team. Also, him and Oren Burks will be big members of that special teams unit for San Francisco. Marcelino McCreary Ball, surprisingly, not included on the Niners practice squad. He did sign with the New York Jets, at least originally. Cornerback. Some people have concerns here. I like the DBs. I'm a little bit concerned about the depth. Now... D'Amador Lenore is getting a lot of slot reps right now. I thought he finished the season strong out wide, but Steve Wilkes keeps talking about him as playing slot nickel. Him and Isaiah Oliver are going to play there. Samuel Womack, I've always said this, has really good anticipatory skills and ability to break on the football. Good feet as well. He's a little bit shorter, but because of those instincts on the outside, he can play there. Ambry Thomas had a pretty good preseason in camp. I'd like to see him make more plays on the ball and finish plays. And you know what you're getting out of Charvarius Mooney Ward. Safety. Talano Hufanga was an all-pro in year two. We'll see if Jair Brown can start alongside Hufanga at some point. But right now, it's Deshaun Gibson who really revitalized his career last year. If you remember... He originally signed to the practice squad, elevated to the 53 when Jimmy Ward got hurt with that hamstring injury on top of the thumb injury that he had. And Gibson played so well that when Ward came back, he had to play slot nickel. And I do think that Steve Wilkes might go with some nickel packages, which does allow Hufanga, Gibson, and Jair Brown to see the field at the same time because Hufanga and Brown do thrive playing in the box. Specialists, we'll see what happens going into week one. Because right now, we're not sure who the Niners kicker is going to be as of midweek. They'd ideally like it for, like for Jake Moody to be that guy as a third-round pick coming out of Michigan. But with that quad injury, the severity of it 
that could keep him out of the lineup week one. And if that's the case, San Francisco will probably sign a player, a kicker to the practice squad, elevate him to game day, and then go back and forth between the practice squad and the active roster, depending on how long Moody is out. Mitch Wisnowski, punter, very good pinning balls inside the 20 last year, but in the preseason, I thought that he was awful. And then Tabor Pepper, a very solid long snapper. So as we look ahead to week one, that is your initial Niners roster going into 2023. Who you got for this week one matchup? San Francisco, Pittsburgh. We want to hear from the faithful down in that comment section. So get those all too early predictions in right now.